affecting the intelligence quotient of Nigerian child. This and more in just a moment. Good evening, it's nice to have you on NTA Channel 9 News at 7. I am Paul Abel. Now the news in details. In a bid to alleviate the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on low-income earners in Nigeria, the federal government is partnering Cross River as one of the selected pilot states to construct 1,000 housing units under the National Social Housing Program. Correspondent reports that the social housing is to be spread across the three senatorial districts of the state to be located in Ojubani, Ekam, and Ogoja local government areas. Bridging the national housing deficit is integral to poverty reduction and ensuring security in Nigeria. Therefore, the National Social Housing Program, established in October 2020 under the Office of the Vice President of Nigeria, is being promoted by the Economic Sustainability Committee. Geared towards mitigating the effects of COVID-19 on the economy, the cost of each housing unit is not to be more than 2 million naira over a payment period of 15 years and funded under a 200 billion naira debenture deed by Family Homes Funds and the Central Bank of Nigeria. The Cross River State Government is excited with the offer as it will enable low-income earners own their personal houses before they retire as it promises to improve the social housing facilities for the beneficiaries at no cost to either parties. The sensitivity, responsibility, value and quality of a government is its sensibility to the earnings, pains, aspirations and the banality of the common man. So your provision of two million naira for one meal for a one bedroom house for the poorest of the poor and not necessarily tied them to a formal income regime is very commendable. Uh, our ideal situation, Your Excellency, is that within three months of the start of the construction, that the union people know their house and their numbers. It does a lot of wonders for the project. The second phase of the housing scheme will also take another 1,000 housing units under the Affordable Housing Program. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NGA News. Nigeria and the Republic of Korea are partnering on maritime security at the Gulf of Guinea. Minister of Transportation Chibike Rutmi Amechi has a meeting with First Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs. Republic of Korea, Choi Jong-kun says the two countries are interested in finding ways of securing the region. The Deep Blue Sea Project, an initiative of the federal government in tackling insecurity, was commended by the Korean government. We discussed quite a lot that has to do with maritime relationship, especially the Deep Blue Project. Uh, uh, we concluded to collaborate and uh, maybe you hear from him. He, he then promised some support and assistance from the government of the Republic of Korea. The um, people project, uh, we commend and appreciate ministers and ministries uh, initiative and relentless uh, 
uh, uh, implementation of the project also because it not only uh, increased the uh, maritime security of Nigeria, especially in the brown water, but also it contributes to the uh, uh, regional security and stability uh, to the international community. Korean government plans of hosting a joint commission with the Nigerian government in the month of October 2021. Still on security, the federal government is fine-tuning modalities to provide lasting solution to the lingering boundary dispute between Aquaibom and Cross River State. Director General of the National Boundary Commission, Adamu Adaji, disclosed this in Aquaibom State at a meeting with stakeholders of the affected communities. Kelvin Samuel reports. The stakeholder sensitization meeting between members of the affected communities, state government and the representative of the National Boundary Commission provided an opportunity for stakeholders to brainstorm in order to come up with lasting solution that will put an end to the lingering boundary disputes between Aquaibom and Cross River states, which they say has claimed many lives. I call on a political and Tyson rulers from our neighbor, the Cross River State, to embrace the peace process and call on their people to desist from these incessant attacks that has led to unnecessary killings and malicious destruction of properties. We cannot do without um, boundary demarcation because whether you like it or not, there will all be, always be issues emanating from boundaries. Now, when creation of a came, after creation of a who brought down a boundary problem, raised up the boundary problem, but we have ancestral boundary. I am very, very happy of this job. I believe you will help us because we are all victimized. In their separate speeches, the state deputy governor represented by the permanent secretary and the representative of the National Boundary Commission assured the people that an end is in sight as the commission has already concluded plans for proper boundary demarcation, which is the reason for their visit to collect vital data that will assist in decision making. We're making a series of efforts to ensure that peace is being restored between us and the people of Ebukane in crossing the states. The National Boundary Commission considers this meeting as an opportunity to assess our collective efforts and relevant issues on the tested boundaries with a view to advancing the cause of boundary demarcation, essentially what is designed to sensitize and enlightened members of the affected communities on the essence of boundaries. The team, after a meeting with the two local government stakeholders, also visited the people of Uruan local government area and agreed that justice will be done and peace restored to all the affected communities. In Uyo, Kelvin Samuel, NTA News. The Police Service Commission has set up an in-house panel to study in details available documents relating to the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCP, Abakiari, indicted by a report of the Federal Bureau of Investigation of the United States of America. A statement by the Commission indicates that the panel headed by Tijani Mohamed, Director of the Department of Police Discipline in the Commission, is expected to examine the facts of the allegations as contained in the FBI indictment and also to look at the extant rules as a means of keeping abreast of the matter pending the submission of the report by the police investigative panel. The report of the in-house panel is expected to assist the commission take an informed decision when the police investigative panel report is submitted to the commission for consideration. And now to education, poverty, family congestion and frequent industrial actions in tertiary institutions 
have been identified as some of the major causes affecting intelligence quotient of an average Nigerian child. This resonated at the 98th inaugural lecture of the University of Calabar. The theme of the lecture, from admission to graduate intervening variables of intelligence and creativity, was attended by the Vice Chancellor, Professor Florence Banku Obi, who was represented past inaugural lecturers, the academia traditional rulers, family members, and students of the University of Calabar. Erika Evi reports. It was time for the August lecturer to showcase his academic matrix to humanity through intellectual information as an educational psychologist. The DVC administration, Professor Michael Ocom, representing the Vice Chancellor, Professor Florence Ubi, commended the 98th lecturer for a world to research academic work that has added value to the educational sector, University of Calabar Educational Community, and Nigeria. Push people ahead. We didn't uh, take sufficient note, you know, of, of people's um, psychomotor skills. And parents just say children should go and study this and study that without knowing that they have to first study the child and to uh, appreciate the areas of the child's strength. The royal father and the leader of the Igbo Social Cultural Organization in Cross River State, Sir Emmanuel Ezenwey, is appealing to the federal government to step up admission procedures in order to produce intellectually competent citizens. The inaugural lecture he delivered was uh, overwhelming and wonderful. Uh, to my assessment, it will impact a lot on all the students in Nigeria. I feel very, very excited. Well, of course I, I understand that it's something really great. The 98th inaugural lecturer, Professor Roland Alameke Ihenacho, Professor of Educational Psychology, Faculty of Education, University of Calabar, was born to the family of Mazi Jona A.K. Ihenacho and Regina Mwafo Ihenacho of Obinze in a very west local government area of Imo States. Professor Ihenacho, in his lecture, outlined different stages of child growth and performance to enhance quality education in Nigeria through a well-defined admission policy at all levels of education. He condemns the irregularities and badly implemented policies of the federal character in issuing admission to students. Education system is not for everybody. The formal education is not for everybody. There are other people, other areas they can go into and become very marvelous people. So they should try to find out those areas. That's for, for students. For the university community, we are having a lot of problems in the examination setup. So I think we should discard this mapping out a period for, and say it is period for the examination. That has created more problems than it can solve. Let us evaluate the students' intents. The lecturer maintained that breastfeeding and wealth creation have a lot of advantages in the life of a growing Nigerian child. Hence, the need for mothers to breastfeed their babies for the development of the brain, while government should provide enabling environment for wealth creation. In Calabar, Erika Ivi, NTA News. We go for a commercial timeout now, but before we go, don't forget that you can equally watch this newscast online on our YouTube channel, YouTube slash NTA Calabar. We have more stories for you at the other side of the break. Break. Please stay with us. Airtel, the smartphone network. As news breaks from the north, south, east, and west of Nigeria, we bring it to you. News from the length and breadth of Cross River State is sent to you via this channel. With movers and shakers in various spheres of influence talking to us, we cover niche and showcase our experience in broadcasting. Because it's NTA Calabar before others. You can't get this anywhere else. It's only here on NTA Calabar News, showing at this time 3 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and 7 p.m. every day. NTA Calabar News. Our 
experience counts. You're welcome back to the news. We'll begin the second segment with stories on photography. The enormous untapped opportunities abounding in photography can turn around the fortunes of Nigerian youth if properly unearthed. These opportunities were brought to the fore during the Calabar Mega Photography Workshop held in commemoration of the 2021 World Photography Day. Maureen Liu Ajam reports. Photography, like any other skill, art or craft, requires training and specialized knowledge for any practitioner to function optimally. More challenging is the 21st century photography, where photographers are responsible for the digital or physical development of images and may also be responsible for some or all of the editing aspect of their production. These and many more reasons inform the collaboration between the Cross River State Media Practitioners Association of Nigeria and a digital camera company renowned for high revolutionary technologies. They are here today, you know, you know, to further train our people on the new gears, to further bring some innovation into the photography business. So that is why they are here. Uh, the potentials that exist in photography actually in Nigeria is actually enormous. It's it's mind-blowing the amount of talent we have, even the youths. Um, so we've had photography for quite some time, and um, uh, at some point, uh, it, it, the, the profession started blooming. I mean, we, we had photographers before that photographed the presidents, even before uh, democracy and everything, that photographed presidents. Now, these photographers used to live a very, very comfortable life. They're very big people. They're influential because uh, they actually portray the image uh, that people will see. They, they show the side of government, the side of the personalities that people, they want to see. So uh, these guys are actually very influential and it's still the same right now. Sustaining the Earth's treasure through the islands is the theme for this year's World Photography Day. And with that in mind, what should be the role of stakeholders and the future of the Nigerian youth? If you are not trained by professionals, you just be messing up. You can't get the real story. You can't tell the story. You can't communicate the way you should communicate. And that is the main essence of this uh, workshop. Photography is all that gives you what you imagine, what you think, what you feel in real life. We take for granted what pictures are the angles they are taking, their thought process when they are taking it, it's very creative and one that should be encouraged. It's technical to professionalize photography because you can't really define the line between who is a professional in art, basically. But for one who has that practice, who has that technique in creating images, digital images in this, in this sense, it would be nice to get training understand the ethics of the business, understand what the value is in what you are creating. The collaboration between the Cross River State Media Practitioners Association of Nigeria and the Digital Camera Organization brought the presence of the company's products to Calabar for easy access to its high revolutionary technologies, just as it hopes to improve journalism and digital life. Let's continue to make a click tell millions of stories. In Calabar, Maureen Leo Ajom, NTA News. Still on skills acquisition, the Cross River State Government, in partnership with Leaders Den Foundation, is set for another edition of the Spirit of Enterprise Conference in celebration of the 2021 World Entrepreneurs Day. The conference, designed to be one of the biggest gathering of entrepreneurs, will culminate with the Spirit of Enterprise Awards on the 27th of August 2021 at 10 o'clock in the morning at the EDC Conference Hall of Professor Eyo Ita House, Calabar. A major highlight of the event is the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Dialogue by speakers with the theme, Effects of Industrialization Development. The Spirit of Enterprise Conference is an annual event initiative to create opportunities for aspiring and emerging entrepreneurs 
to showcase investment opportunities in the industrialization drive of the state. The event, according to the release, will be flagged off by the state governor, Ben Ayade, and is organized by the special assistance to the governor on entrepreneurs development. Empowering youths and women to create wealth by applying innovative skills within the agriculture industry will serve as a catalyst for job creation and sustainable livelihood and recognizing that empowerment is a pathway out of poverty. This resonated at the first phase of the Nigerian Youth and Women Agro Premiership Program flagged off in Calabar, Cross River State, from where Udwak Etim reports that the program is an initiative of the Miss Agriculture Nigeria. The Agro Premiership Program flagged off in Calabar facilitates the engagement of over 1,000 youths and women of Cross River State in poultry farming under nasal CBN loan scheme, and beneficiaries are cut across the 18 local government areas of the state. The initiative is that of the Miss Agriculture Nigeria, Christabel Eze, accompanied by her Ghanaian counterpart, Margaret Afreye, to mobilize young people and women in Nigeria to engage in productive commercial farming aimed at wealth creation and contributing to food security in their countries. These wrappers are distributed to widows to make them have a sense of belonging, even as plans are underway to improve on livelihoods through commercial agriculture. So I'm so grateful that I am being honored in this way because that name, they call me agriculture, has really come out today. This empowerment is going to help the Nigerian youth and it's going to create more millionaires from it. And we know Supporting the development of agribusiness training intervention, the Cross River State Government says the program is to add value to the presidential agenda in zero economic road map and the agricultural revolution, as farmers are the starting point of the food chain that will guarantee access to food for all. The only thing that is needed from you is seriousness. If you don't succeed, you have nobody else to blame than yourselves. This event is to unveil officially our poultry farming business to be able to assist our youth and our women and also distribution of wrappers to 500 widows in Cross River State. Central Bank, many, many years ago, and even up to then, has come up with a lot of interventions. So, as to enhance rapid other stakeholders believe that the program will reduce youth unemployment and build a sustainable livelihood among farmers. In Calabar, Udwak Etam, NTN News. In pursuance of government drive for food sufficiency in the country, the Aquaibum State Government has empowered fishermen and fish farmers with fishing inputs for maximum productivity. The distribution was undertaken through the State Ministry of Agriculture and correspondent Evelyn Badueku, who witnessed the exercise, now reports. Aquaibom State is known as a state rich in aquatic resources, which is sold in large quantities to different parts of the country. To improve on its production within the state and beyond, the state government has distributed fishing nets, fingerlings and other fishing inputs to fish farmers and fishermen to enhance this sector of agriculture. In those days, fishermen were not remembered, but today the governor of Aguaibum State has put fishermen into limelight. I collected 300 fingerlings and a bag of fish feed. I'm very, very grateful today. Commissioner for Agriculture, Dr. Glory Edith, said the continuous provision of inputs to the farmers to produce various crops and livestock is to target at least 80% food production and consumption within the state. If you want to have a better yield, it starts from the input. Because by the time you use wrong input, automatically your output will be very poor. We are here to empower the fishermen and the fish farmers so that they can also increase their production. Fellow Commissioner, I must say you are the reason why we are getting inputs now. At least we saw some from the federal government for the farmers in the Kwaibom State. The state deputy governor and other key stakeholders speak on the importance of the exercise in the production food chain. 
The empowerment of the fish farmers and fishermen is expected to create export opportunities. In Uyo, Evelyn Badu Epo, NTA News. And now to the COVID-19 situation around the country. As of 19th August 2021, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, confirmed 674 new cases of COVID-19. The data shows that Lagos State recorded the highest number of 355 cases, followed by Rivers, 87. FCT Abuja recorded 38 cases, Ogun, 33. Akwaibom and Oyo State have 32 cases each, Edo, 22. Ekiti, 20. Kwara, 17. And Delta, 12. Others include Bayelsa, 8 cases, Gombe, 5. Kaduna 4, Oshun 4, Enugu and Nasarawa states recorded two cases each, while Plateau just had one case. The total number of confirmed cases of the pandemic in the country now stands at 185,267 cases. And that COVID-19 report brings us to the end of tonight's news. But before we go, a quick look at some of the stories that made the headlines. The federal government has partnered Cross River State as one of the selected pilot states to construct 1,000 housing units under the National Social Housing Program with the aim of alleviating the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the economy and on low-income earners in Nigeria. The federal government, under the leadership of the National Boundary Commission, has met with stakeholders in Cross River and Aquarium states to resolve the lingering boundary disputes between affected communities in the two states. You also heard in the news that the University of Calabar 98th inaugural lecture has identified poverty, family congestion, frequent industrial actions as some of the factors which have affected the intelligence quotient of an average Nigerian child and called for improvement in all ramifications. That does it for the news tonight. On behalf of the entire crew, I am Paul Eber. Good night.